Hi, this is Johnny Bergen. Today we're talking about a great tune called High Tide by Freddie King. This is different from his other uh, crop of instrumentals. They're all great, but this one is just a straight up blues. Most of Freddie's songs from this period have like, they have like a bridge, they have a little melody, they have maybe little devices, tempo changes, things like that. And this is just like a ferocious blues like what he would play in a club for the grown folks. So it's right up my alley. Rather than go through this lick by lick because the song is almost six and a half minutes long, I'm going to talk first about the rhythm guitar playing and then I'm going to talk about the ingredients that go into this song, what to look for. So that's going to be a, a fun one. So the, the rhythm guitar is really nice. So this isn't like a, I guess like some people might call it an inside chord. It's like the inside of a, this is an A, and there's the inside of a A seventh on the D, G, and B strings. Bar with your first finger and this. The nice thing about barring rather than this is then you can hammer on, and then you can do seven, seven, seven on the D, G, and B. I'm doing all down strokes. just about all down strokes and you kind of the neat thing about the rhythm playing is that you've got the feel of this you got that feel but you're playing with chords and you can of course mix the lump and the chords which is just always a good thing to do you can also play a lump like that. Some people do that just to save their fingers instead of they just go. Now let's talk about the ingredients. There's a mix between kind of a major sound and a minor sound. B.B. King, Albert King, Freddie King, everyone is kind of like, is kind of playing, creating a balance with. Because if you just did this constantly, that's the Freddie King style where to, to go down this way instead of... If you just did that and you didn't have any of the major notes, in fact, it starts out with a major note like this. Then a minor note, right? So you've got this going back and forth between major and minor. So I'm going to play the major and minor notes. So I don't think Freddie King probably, I don't even know if he could play a major scale or a minor scale, but he could play that. And that was kind of going up and down within that position and tonal center, right? And then a major sound out of that. here and there you know that's a tug it's neither major nor minor you know even a tug there to make it I've heard Billy Flynn call it sour it's like to make it a little sour right that's one position and then of course this all translates to an octave higher right
There's a few tricks that you may not be familiar with in this position, which would be your first finger bends. <laughs> did two in a row, right? On the fifth fret of the B string and the G string. Which brings me to the next, which is here. This is a D minor, sh I think of it as a D minor shape, just the same way as I think of this as an E shape, moved up to the A pitch. This is, here's a D minor shape, and then moved up to the A pitch, where the root is on the 10th fret of the B string. Occasionally, you'll play here with your first finger where your third was, and you play in front of it, Then I move back. He only does this a couple of times in high tide. Um, he sometimes also will play the same way your third finger is normally here in this E position. Play with your first finger here, and you can play in front of it, just the way you're in front of it here. He already moved back. He does that in high tide. One thing that he always does when he's in this position, or in this position way up here, which is the same thing an octave higher, is there's a lot of tension and release. There's, he does the tension and release by shifting between major and minor, and he does the tension and release by just going to the one and the, from the seventh. So on the eighth fret, if you can do a good vibrato, you really need that. So he'll go like a whole go around practically like this. But he does, and then he does. That's over a step bend. It's like a step and a half bend to say, ah, it's a real uh, exclamation point, right? And then. So there's, you can experiment between more of a half step or a whole step. Another one he does repeats a lot is this. seventh and eighth fret. Just think of it as part of a chord. It's part of a D seventh. And he plays it over the one. I'm just showing you where that goes um, over the chord. So that's that's pretty much his ingredients. First finger here, or your root here. And they'll do the same stuff he does in tour down, you know. Notice the little bends. It really swings. Da 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 da. Or da da da. You know, there's a swing to it. It doesn't. It's I tried to play that with no expression, and now here's with with some little tugs, and with the accents. So you've got to get the swing and the accents in there. So your roots here, and you're playing out of there. Your roots here, and you're playing out of here. Your roots here, and you're playing out of here. Not much of that, but a little bit. And your roots here. So, so far, so good, right? 
Well, there's one more really, really super important concept here, and that is the Chicago roots of Freddie King. The important thing about Freddie King is his, uh, he was kind of the king of the West Side for a while, and he was very influenced by Eddie Taylor, Jimmy Rogers, and by which I mean it's a chordal thing, which is, this is like behind the long A is the way I think of it. Then you could play it up an octave higher, just like we were doing this up an octave higher, right? Then he goes right back to his furious single notes, right? And then you could take this and move it up two frets. If you were down here, three and five on E and B, up two, to five to seven and five. That's the top part of a D chord, right? And then if you move it up two more and then play like the seventh, like a boogie pattern like this, down two. So that's should probably be familiar to you. You know, I think of it as like a boogie pattern that's been turned upside down. It's just like the boogie patterns you have in a bass line, but it's in it. And Freddie King used that in tons of instrumentals. Tons. So you've got that mixed in with all the, the uh, stinging leads. And then you've got, of course, something to make it sound way better, which is the metal on metal. And then you're really cooking with gas. Hear the metal on metal? You can actually hear it sounds better than the pick. a little bit of the song there so have fun with this tune thanks for watching this video have fun playing some freddie king don't be afraid of these it it does have a, a great sound as i've been saying but either way you just got to put that uh, ferocity in there and see freddie king as a mixture of two worlds the uh the eddie taylor um chordal world of the chicago thing where you play the chords you know and then this Oh. Thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.